Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host Mitchell J. Rabin and we're very glad you're joining us again today. We are on location in Sedona, Arizona and we are seated with Jonathan Parker, the founder and president of the School of Energy, Healing and Enlightenment. Jonathan has been around doing this kind of work for decades actually. He was originally known, very well known, for his work through infomercials and using subliminals and hypnosis and CDs and tapes to help people come to another level of self-development. This has matured and ripened into the work that he's doing now. He was known for a whole series, an audio tape series, called Pathways to Mastership. And uh, you may have seen him browsing through the uh, TV stations late at night or even early in the morning many years ago during the 80s. But now Jonathan has taken his work to a whole new level and that's going to be the subject of our conversation today. Hello, Jonathan. Hey. <laughs> Great to have you. Nice to be here. Good, good. Yeah. So how is it that you um, went from, you were very successful at what you were doing with self-development and weight loss and self-image and all of that. Yeah. What happened inside you that got you excited and kind of notched up to another level? You know, um, I originally started with the Pathways to Mastership program back in the 70s. And that program was really more of a spiritual program. But what I found was that as people were going through a program like that, which covers a lot of different subjects, they were stuck in a lot of areas. And so I started developing a number of different programs and a whole range of subjects. And self-image was one of the key things because how we feel inside of ourselves, not just at a conscious level, it would be nice if everything just worked out consciously. Hey, I'd like to be rich. I'd like to be beautiful. I'd like to be this and that. But you mean it doesn't work that way? Well, it doesn't seem to. You know, <laughs> I, we, I've noticed. <laughs> uh, what I found was uh, that there's uh, most of what determines a person's life is actually either functioning in an unconscious level or in what we call the subconscious. Yeah. Sometimes it's just called the inner mind. But it's, it's below our radar. It's below the level of our awareness. And a lot of times people have no idea why they get into the situations they get into. In fact, they seem to come out of nowhere. It's like, why is this happening to me? So I developed a series of programs to really help people you know, target those kind of things. And I felt that was the best uh, avenue of subject matter to go through with the, the infomercials. Now, so. do you have a background in psychology? I know that you were yeah. a preacher. Yeah, and I know too. preachers know a lot. <laughs> 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 but yeah. uh, did you have any kind of formal training right. in, in counseling or psychology or anything yeah. of that sort? Yeah, my uh, bachelor's degree is in chemistry. So I had a science background. Well, that's a help. <laughs> yeah, so I started there. Then I went and went and got another bachelor's degree in theology. Mm. And then I went that's into... That's not a help. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> in some it could ways. Be. Yeah, yeah. It could be a trap, too, yeah. in some ways. But um, while I was a minister, I started studying psychology and did that for about six, seven years and went through graduate school. Mm. And so I've gone through master's programs and a PhD program and, uh, in human behavior and development and counseling. The uh, master's is in counseling yes, psychology. Yes, I see. So uh, that's sort of the so background. So you have a good, a, a varied background I would and say a good one. That's to, foundational. Yeah. That right. was the foundation. But what I've discovered since those degrees is things that you don't normally find in books, or at least at the time you didn't. Surely. It's, you know, that sort of material is out well, there Well, the more domain now. of transpersonal psychology very much right. has begun to cover yeah. a lot of the subjects that you were and are currently yeah, dealing with. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. that's, that's right. So you had that foundation and you, you started to foray yeah. into those right. domains and now you're working just on a whole other level. I mean, energy healing and enlightenment. Right, yeah, that is that is a whole wow. different I mean, level. That's, right. you know, that's like getting up there. Right. <laughs> you know, like maybe it's there. Yeah. What, what is it that takes place in the classes that you, that you teach? There are different types of classes. Um, there's a whole program that takes people through a self-discovery process of finding out what are the forces that go into making our lives what it is. Not just at a psychological level, mm -hmm. because what I find is that psychology uses a lot of coping mechanisms which work very well to help people through a lot of situations. But there's something else that's going on. They don't necessarily get 
the root cause out. They may uh, help a person through pharmacology or they may help a person through coping. But what I find is that there's a, an intangible component that is not readily known uh, to science because it's getting into the domain where science has not yet gone for the most part. And that's the intuitive side of us. That's the energetic side. And it lies kind of at a subtle level. But the effects are anything but subtle. Well, science is beginning to tiptoe they sort into of, those domains. I mean, yeah. we have some instrumentation these days and technologies and measuring devices that are beginning right. to tap into those right. subtler domains. That, but what is it that someone will learn if they come to the school? Are they going right. to be learning, like Barbara Brennan's school, they're going to be learning hands-on healing or some right. kind of healing? Yeah, we do. Um, uh, we go through a lot of different forms of healing. Mm -hmm. Some of it is like hands-on, as you said. What we're trying to get at is the energy component that lies beneath the problem. So it's not just a psychological issue. Right. There's an energy component, a subtle energy component. And through the intuitive tools that we teach in the classes, a person can learn to go in and begin to remove these patterns. That's one part of it. That's only a piece of it. And energy Are you medicine, talking about like when we refer in the esoteric literature to the causal level? So there's like some kind of soul purpose yes. for the reason a person's right. life is is playing out as it is, mm -hmm. and whatever that lesson may be, or or that gift to the world may be. Sure, is that what you're? That's what I'm. That's the next. Oh, excuse piece me. of it. Okay. No, no. Um, a lot of people are practicing different forms of energy healing or what they call energy medicine. Mm -hmm. And that term is very broad these days and it applies to a whole lot of different modalities. Behind that, there's another process that we use, which I sometimes call soul healing or spiritual healing, which really gets into a whole other realm. Um, let's say there's a, a person has a, either a psychological issue, an emotional issue, a mental block, or even a physical ailment there may well be some thought processes, some emotional content that forms an energy pattern in the person's energy field, which we call the aura. There are energy techniques you can go in and actually remove those energy patterns. And if mm. the clearing is done effectively, the person's life will change. And in many cases, these things will go away completely. In fact, very common, after I've worked mm. on people, sometimes they'll say, what happened? I was feeling very upset and it's gone. I don't know where it went. What, what did you do with it? Well, because we're not commonly aware of these things because we don't see them, we don't measure them, we don't perceive them normally, we're not aware that there's actually an energetic component behind it. The soul healing goes behind that, though. It goes even to a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Because to me, just doing energy healing is dealing with the symptom, in a sense. So it may help the person, but if you don't get the cause behind it, yeah. then the problem could resurface in another way perhaps or even sure. in the same way. So one of the things we teach people to do is to tune into the another component that makes up a human being. There's two main components. There's the conscious part of us, there's the personality that we are commonly aware of. Mm -hmm. And then behind that is what is normally called the soul. That's also called the true self. Sometimes it's called the higher self or it's the super conscious self. There's many other terms for it. Some people even call it the God self. It's a part of us that is how we, are, we were originally created. It's our divine essence. It's who we really are. And when a person gets in touch with that, there's an automatic transformational process that happens. When we bring the soul to the surface and bring the soul to the issue, the issue begins to melt. Because the issue actually was formed out of some pain, out of a projection of mind, out of a perception, out of a false conclusion, out of a, um, an erroneous belief. And when we bring the light a of false truth. False assumption. False assumption. It's a perception. Mm -hmm. And the right. soul doesn't function at that level. The soul sees through that, through, sees through the veils of those mm -hmm. illusions. And when you bring the soul present, it begins to automatically dissolve the pattern. And the person's life is transformed in absolutely the most amazing ways. Lives change. The things that people want in life, the things that are the intangibles, like love and beauty and joy and happiness, those things are inherently the nature of the soul. 
And so as we teach people to get in touch with the soul, it comes to the surface. And essentially what happens is all these negative things begin dissolving. And the new person that emerges, which may be the term born again in the Christian terminology, mm -hmm. there is a new person that emerges. It's the real person who they were originally designed and created to be. So and, and that it's, comes out. It's basically that the personality level melts yeah. in the face of the shining light, if you will, of yeah. the soul. Yeah. And so the reemergence, however we would term it, right. is authentic. Yes. It's the real where's the personality then in that in that uh, at that moment? It shifts and it changes actually. The person that we think we are, the person that we see when we look in the mirror, is not the real us. We think it's us because that's all we've ever known. But there are many personality changes that we go through. People sometimes go through mood shifts all through the day, for instance. That begins to go away. As the soul begins to emerge more and more in the person's life and it integrates through that person's life, the personality takes on a light, a glow. It takes on a beauty. It takes on a warmth. And there's a whole different characteristic. All the virtues that we so embrace and that the religions yeah. of old if you yeah. will, um, also have always embraced. Right. The things that a person would admire in the saints and in the yes. virtue people, yeah. those are the automatic, natural traits of the soul. Everybody has that within them. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh, a few chosen people, but everybody exactly. can bring that to the surface. They were patient enough to let them develop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. To be uh, accessed yeah. through shining through the more superficial aspects. Right. So then, Jonathan, uh, from this point of view, is enlightenment, the other part of the name of the school, right. um, an extension of this kind of energy right. and soul healing? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the process, the word enlightenment is used in so many different ways. You know, the way I use it is... Uh, Maybe overused, in fact. I think, yeah, you're right. I think uh, so many people use that in just kind or of a casual... As in, let's say, misused, I think. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I've uh, sought to do through the school is to bring a balance into many different areas. And what often happens to people is they go through shifts, sometimes very rapidly. In a few seconds, a person will just have like what we might call an aha experience. They experience a shift within them, and they're transformed forever. Mm. But it's like a flower. You know, you, you watch a flower, and there's the bud, and it looks like nothing's happening. And then one morning you go out there, and that flower has completely opened into a beautiful rose. And that's what happens with us. We, we make the internal changes. We do the clearing process. And then this flower blossoms. The true self begins to come to the surface. Mm -hmm. So... Part of the process, as I've configured it to be, is we need to clear a lot of the issues that keep people bound into the suffering, the pain, the struggles of life. Virtually everybody experiences that. When you go through the shift, the struggles melt away. You no longer see life as climbing a mountain or pushing a rock up the hill and have it roll back on you. There's a, there's a, a natural flow, what I call universal harmony that begins to happen and things just seem to start magically easy, uh, more easily happening for a person. Does that suggest then if someone is in the uh, realm of their life of suffering and strife and difficulty and all of that, that in that state they can't be enlightened? Does it suggest well, that? Well, you know, a lot of times people are enlightened out of that state. They, they, they that's kind of where I was kind yeah, of nudging us yeah, because yeah, that's we right. have examples of people yeah. in the gutter right. who, oh my God, in the right. middle of chaos and confusion, yeah. somehow that light bulb goes off right. and without all of that that's apparent true. preparation. That's true. It's just, you know, it's like in Zen, they refer to the sudden school. Uh -huh. You know, it's like, ding. Yeah. It's sort of like it's there all the time, but right. somehow it got pierced. Right. And somehow all of the superficiality of the personality gets washed right. away in a moment. Yes, yes. Instant transformation. Yeah. That's not the normal path, though. I think it's a small percentage of people that experience it that way. How can we increase that percentage? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. hopefully by not going through the suffering route. Yeah. And the, the path that I teach is a path of surrender, of getting in touch what the interfering issue is, whether it's an emotional issue or it's a mental issue or a physical issue, and you surrender it, you get in touch with it, 
And this is part of it. There's a, a skill and there's an art to this. Mm -hmm. The skill or the science of it, I can teach with some very specific techniques. But then there's kind of an art to it, and I call it surfing. You get in touch with the feeling, you get in touch with the issue, and then you surf it. Hmm. And you, you keep bringing a state of surrender, a willingness to release the need for the problem. And as you bring the soul presence to that, it begins to transform. And so you follow that wave until it merges back into the calm sea, as all waves do. And the issue just melts away. It's like if you take a, a sugar cube and pop it into a, a cup of tea, for instance, the sugar cube automatically dissolves in the tea because the tea's nature is to dissolve the sugar cube. The soul's nature is to dissolve everything unlike itself. But we must make the request. You must invite it to be present. And as you invite it to be present, it comes through and it will automatically then begin to dissolve all the interfering issues and all of the things that we think we are that we aren't. Mm. It's kind of a magical process. So would you say then that, like you use the image, a beautiful image of a rose flowering through its process, uh, that enlightenment <clears throat> from the way you're putting it is the natural expression mm. of a life that has been cleared and cleared and cleared of the, of the superficial dross and yes. suffering? Yeah. Like, is there any... You know, not to get too complex or focused on it, but I'm just wondering if in your mind there's like a, a physiological difference between the so-called unenlightened state right before, you mm -hmm. know, where someone is substantially cleared, mm -hmm. substantially clean and bright, right. but not, let's say, what we'd call enlightened. Yeah. Is there a, how would you speak to that moment? To the moment before, sometimes you, know, you don't know that you're at that point. You might be sitting... You don't know you're enlightened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, Could sometimes be. people don't know what's happened to them. <laughs> they just know that they somehow suddenly feel very blissful, very happy, very euphoric, uh, very uplifted. I feel that often. <laughs> yeah. And eventually that state will sustain where it doesn't go away. Mm. And you're, you always feel that way. Mm. Most people don't know that they can always feel that way. Yeah. They think the natural state is to have pain and suffering, and everything's a struggle. Guilt and, and shame. The stress and all that, and it just, it goes away, it melts away, it really So can. are you suggesting then that in the enlightened state that uh, there's not sadness, there's not grief, there's just a permanent state of bliss and joy? Well, I think it depends on the level of enlightenment, and there are levels of enlightenment. Oh, okay. There are certain levels you go through where you can experience a very compassionate feeling for the suffering of other people. And sometimes you might even feel the suffering in yourself of other people. But it's not the same way. You're not feeling the suffering yourself, but you feel the compassion for the suffering of others. Mm -hmm. As you, you can even move through those stages, however, and you can reach a place where you're very, uh, very peaceful, very settled, have a, a beautiful state of equanimity that sustains through whatever might be going on around you. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. go through the, the ups and downs. It starts to level out. If it is so that we are truly all one at the highest state, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, in the, the tantric level or the Vajrayani level mm -hmm. of Tibetan Buddhism, as an example, uh, if there is one other part of our body in the form of another sentient being suffering, mm -hmm. How is it then that we could be ourselves at total equanimity? Because the true self, the real you that's there, senses, understands, is connected and, and sees and observes the suffering of others, but you don't feel that suffering in the same way that the person that's suffering feels it. The person that's suffering with it mm. is in a state of being wrapped up in the suffering. You are being the observer. You're being there as a support. You're, you're able to bring a very refined and a very beautiful healing energy to that person so you're able to lift them out of the suffering. But it, it's not like it. you're taking part of their suffering in the same way they do. So in a sense you're saying, you know, it kind of reminds me of Mother Teresa who uh, when she was asked about the people with whom she was working and helping and just, I see God in everyone. How yes. could you work with the people who look like this and act like this uh, and yeah. have so little and, you know, lepers and all. Right. 
I see God in everyone. Right, so, sure. Like she was just relating to that soul level right. that you're referring to. Yes, that's exactly the, the, that's the soul healing I'm speaking of. That you're able to not only perceive and know that that's who that person really is, but by holding the intention around them, you can actually lift them and help them to move out of that pain. Would, I mean, you've been at this for many years. Yeah. Do you feel that there have been students who have gone through your program, your school, and become enlightened? Oh, yeah, surely. Really? Yeah, quite a number. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's, it's beyond what a person can imagine. You cannot know what it is by thinking about it or projecting or trying to imagine it. It mm -hmm. is a whole different experience. Once you realize it, once you have the experience yourself, it's completely different from what you even imagined. Mm -hmm. More beautiful than you imagined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what you're also really implying uh, is that it's nearer at hand. It's so near at hand. Than we would think. I mean, I have a feeling really that <coughs> there's this very slight quantum shift that yeah. needs to happen and it, yeah. it's like right there. It's like yeah. hiding, you know, like sometimes when you look around the corner, you think you see some eye. It's like right there. Yeah, it feels to me like a very thin veil right. between the worlds. Right. And that, that veil is getting thinner all the time. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So people can come to the school and become enlightened. <laughs> That's well, great. We need more schools like this. You know, it's not something that we can promise, but most of the people, after they've gone through the whole program and they've done the meditation retreats, have experienced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's fabulous. And not to mention, they also become really good healers for all those right. intermediate stages, if you will. That's, that's that, true. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. What part of your job, I mean, we just have another minute or so, can you, uh, do you feel that you enjoy most? Like what part of the teaching mm. really turns you on most in what you see in your The teaching, that's just the part of what I do. I do the healings every day. So I'm working with people so all the time. You're doing totally hands-on myself, wow. and that is so rewarding because um, most of what I do is over the phone, and I never know what people oh. are going to be calling what their issue is, you know. But I'm able over the phone to actually do an energy transmission that they can feel. It's it's really quite remarkable. Mm. Sometimes I'll work with people on the other side of the world, and it's it's just as if they're sitting in the same room with me. And that's a remarkable process. Most people are very surprised by that, but they'll feel lighter when, we'll, when I'm done. They'll feel uplifted. They'll feel a, a pretty dramatic internal shift from it. So that is the most rewarding thing. And as many years as I've been doing it, it still amazes me that that's possible. <laughs> how, do you, how does that even work? How do you do that? And I understand how it works, but it still amazes me. Sure, know? sure, sure. sure. Yeah. We have explanations. Yeah. I mean, but this is where there's this interface, an exquisite one between science and consciousness and spirituality. Yeah. Because um, quantum physics, for instance, right. describes this as uh, the effect of non-locality. Right. Right. There's an actual explanation of a, there being a subtle energy field that connects yeah. all beings right. in all places and why that interconnectedness can be, you know, but it's really easily kind of described in the existence of a cell phone <clears throat> versus, let's say, a landline. Yes. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. how can we talk to somebody right. in Tokyo from here? Right. And it's you know? crystal clear. <laughs> and it's crystal clear, yeah. yeah. So, too, yeah. your energy, it's like you're hooking in, like tuning into an FM radio or something, you know. Anyway, I'm just or putting like that the, out as an example. Like the Internet. We're all connected. The Internet, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we're being hit over the head, yeah. <laughs> you know, over and over again by our technologies that are these big money-making yeah. communications technologies, you know, and the stock market and everything, you know. Right. But the fact is that all of these are just yet more examples of the reality of life yes. and what we've known in the so-called esoteric or metaphysical worlds for so long right. are actually being manifested all the time in the commercial right. daily world. Right in front of our eyes. And it's, it's so easy to see some of these things because we have the scientific explanations for them. But as you said earlier, we are beginning to get the science behind it now. And it's being talked about more. So... But that doesn't diminish your wonder 
your it's, your yeah. astonishment at the miracle that all of life is. That's what I'm very hearing true. from you. You know, yeah, I'm is. hearing it's that. <laughs> you know, first of all, your heart is lightened mm -hmm. by the effect you just had with somebody. That's right. And whatever other beings you called in for the help, yes. what have you. Right. And so your heart is lightened, and you're happy. And then you, you know, you praise God mm -hmm. that all of this just happened yeah. and you were able to participate. That's right. And it's a miracle. Whether we have explanations with quantum physics or not, right. it remains a miracle, Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, to see people be able to unload their pain and to be yeah. astonished. Where did it go? What happened? <laughs> yeah, right. Wait a minute. <laughs> it was just here. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, I, I want to thank you so much for coming onto the show and sharing your work with us because well I'm, i appreciate you letting me share it it's great oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely this is a real gift it's mm -hmm. a real gift and i like to think that we could use quantum physics to multiply you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like loaves <laughs> you know yeah. because you know more and more this is the kind of school we really need mm. it's you're helping to usher in the new age so to speak yeah. so well truly, i think as people become you. more aware yeah that this is possible it, we're going to see a lot more of it. Exactly. Yeah. As they say, if you build it, they, <laughs> they will come. come so. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again. Okay. Great to see you. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and were enriched and enlightened by it as well. I look forward to seeing you all next week.